Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Joe Handy from Android Authority, and today we're going to take a look at the freshly dropped beta for Android 13. We're going to go over the new stuff and the changes from previous developer previews. If you want to learn more about Android 13 as a whole, check out our developer preview video for some of the overarching stuff from Android 13. There were actually quite a few visual tweaks in the Android 13 beta. The first and most noticeable is the progress bar in the media player in your notification shade. When the audio is playing, the progress bar makes a cute little squiggly line. It's subtle, but it only does this if your audio is playing so you can see if the audio is actually playing at a glance. The actual player is also bigger and it looks slightly different. The play button is now in a different spot and the skip controls are still there, but there is now a second set of controls that may vary depending on which app you're using. Next up, Google has finally added more Material U color options. Previously, the limit was 4, but now you have up to 16 options when you apply a new wallpaper. Additionally, there are now 16 options for the basic color section as well. Reports on this vary, but I have 4 solid colors and 12 dual hue options. In any case, it gives you 32 overall choices at any given time, which is way more than the 8 we had on Android 12. In addition, these new color hues use the new theme style types that everybody was talking talking about from the first developer preview. It's kind of in random order and you can't tell which one is which, and I think that's a bit of an oversight on Google's part, but the new palettes is where the new colors come from. Next up is the Pixel Launcher. The search widget at the top of the app drawer has its old controls back as it seems Google has done experimenting with new stuff there. It's not a big thing, but it's noticeable nevertheless. There were some other small tweaks as well. Priority mode, a change from developer preview one, has been reverted to do not disturb mode. There is a new system icon that looks like a bug droid with a T in it, and some tweaks for bigger screens like a cleaner app drawer. There were some other minor things as well. Likewise, there were a surprising number of new features in the Android 13 beta release. The first one we'll talk about is the clipboard. When you copy text from any application, you'll get this little pop-up in the bottom left corner of the screen where you can edit what went into the clipboard and view what you copied. I personally love this feature and I hope it stays. The Android 13 beta also includes the auto clear function for your clipboard that'll clear out anything once it's about an hour old or so. Another new feature is the ability to control smart devices without unlocking your lock screen. Generally, you need to unlock the phone to do things like adjusting smart light brightness or whatever. You can enable it by going into the display settings, then lock screen, and you'll find it there. I personally couldn't get it to work, but it does need app support for it to function, so it likely won't until app developers jump on board. It isn't active yet, but there are now menu options for face unlock and face and fingerprint unlock. Tapping on either option doesn't really do anything, but it's probably a sign of things to come. This was present in the previous developer preview as well, and it worked just the same. Finally, let's talk about the new QR code scanner. We talked about it in our developer preview video, but the toggle actually works in the Android 13 beta. It works swiftly and accurately in my testing, and it's a pretty good replacement for what used to be there. There are some other smaller features. For example, you can adjust haptic feedback even with silent mode on and it actually works. We'll have to see if Google adds more stuff as the beta releases start pouring out. As per the norm, there were quite a few under the hood updates for the Android 13 beta. The first is called anticipatory audio routing. It lets developers understand whether or not an app's audio stream can be played directly and then lets the developer determine what format to use. It's a small change, but any improvement to audio on Android is welcome. Next up is better error reporting. Most applications use Keystore or KeyMint, which are Android tools for reporting issues. Android 13 improves the process of reporting issues and generating keys so that issues can be more effectively reported. There is also official support in the Android 13 beta for spatial audio and Bluetooth LE. Of course, developers need to support it in their applications before you can use it, but it'll certainly be nice to have and it puts it on par with iOS. You can now turn on the new tear or the Android resource economy function in the developer settings and set consumption limits. To be perfectly honest, if you are not 100% certain about what tear is or how it works, I recommend just leaving that one off for the time being. XDA developers also found a commit for Android 13 that implements something called the MGLRU or the multi-generational least recently used system. It's basically a RAM management system that'll help manage RAM better on low end devices without an abundance of RAM. It has shown to be pretty effective in limiting CPU usage, improving rendering latency, and decreasing the number of apps killed because of lack of memory. Of course, that's all added to the giant list of things that we already talked about in our previous Android 13 developer preview video, so if you want to learn more about that, again, you can check out that video. 
The first thing we'll talk about for this section is the new permissions for media. Now, applications have to ask for permission to use your audio, video, and images separately from one another, and you have to approve use for all three separately. This likely won't have too much of an impact, but you can restrict applications from seeing your videos, but still let them see your images if you really want to. There is a new API that allows developers to keep their apps from showing its contents while users are on the recent apps screen. The popular guess is that apps with sensitive information such as banking apps would find the best use for this and people won't be able to see your personally identifiable information when you're just scrolling through your recent apps. About the only other thing worth mentioning here is the security and privacy quick setting toggle that is disabled for some reason but will probably come back in later betas. We also previously talked about the face unlock stuff which technically should have gone in this section but regardless we'll have to wait for later betas to see how all of that shakes out. Overall, this is a pretty good update. We're starting to see the vision that Google has for this release, and it seems to be Android 12, but better in almost every conceivable way. The privacy and security controls are better and more plentiful, the material use stuff is starting to get more plentiful and better, and the features are starting to improve the experience in ways that make more sense. Since my Galaxy S22 Ultra has been with Samsung for the last week getting repaired, I actually used the Android 13 beta on this Pixel 6 as my daily driver, and other than some small weird things, it's vastly more stable and reliable than the developer previews. You may notice some odd stuff like the privacy and security toggle not working for some reason, but otherwise I haven't had any issues other than the odd hiccup and one instance where I answered a phone call and couldn't hear the recipient. So it's a little finicky, but it's also a beta, so it's kind of to be expected. It's doable as a daily driver, as long as you don't mind the occasional bug. Overall, this is shaping up to be a ho-hum release for Android. There are some cool new things, but nothing so bombastic that it warrants tremendous amounts of excitement. Still, we've seen plenty of people get excited for things like the per app language settings, and some of these small tweaks are things we actually really wanted. Google is on pace for a full Android 13 release later this year. We have a few more betas and a couple of release candidates to go first, so stay tuned to Android Authority for more updates. Oh, and I did check for the Easter egg for Android 13. On my Pixel 6 at least, it's still showing the one from Android 12, so maybe next time we'll get the fresh one for Android 13. And that about does it for this one, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do, and if not, you still know what to do. Check the resources in the video description below for more information, and as always, thanks for watching, everybody, and have a wonderful day.